everybody at some point wants to be in a group, and um, and I think that, you know I was I always had this idea that I could sing, and for ages I couldn't sing at all, and and people used to hate the sound of my voice, but I did like genuinely believe that I could do it. And I mean, I, you know, I'd be around at people's houses singing, and they said, "Oh, shut up, Ryan, you can't sing." And then so I started playing the saxophone because. Because you couldn't sing. Yeah, because I, I did. Well, I, I felt like I could sing, but other people didn't. So I, I used to play the saxophone in this in this group. The first group I joined was called Blue Kitchen, and that was like like a punk group. And you know, we all just sort of got together. And I used to live in this house, and we had a kitchen that was blue, mm. and that's where we used to practice. And that's why the group was called Blue Kitchen. And then I joined this group called the Acrylic Victims. <laughs> you were there with the names. And that, that, was a, that was a group that was already in existence, and they, everybody was at art college. And um, I, I, I was the only one who wasn't in the art college, but I had a saxophone, and they invited me into the group. And it was in that group that I started vocalising. One good thing. The acrylic victims. The acrylic victims. Well, we, we changed from the acrylic victims to the acrylics, right? Because we thought that would, would be snappier. <laughs> right. And so you're playing saxophone still at this point. I was, I was yeah, um, but then I'd, I'd begun to, I'd begun to take over as the singer. That right. was my, that was my. Because we see we had three, we had three guys. Three of us who were singers, and three of us who played sax. And I, you know, I really, really wanted to be the singer because I saw that the guy who was singing most got most of the attention. We did two records and we were like you know, real famous in Hull because we'd had a quarter page advert in the enemy. Yeah, you know, so we were kind of well known in Hull. And then we, we did, um, you know, we supported people, um, supported The Clash at Bridlington, which was like, you know, I always wanted to be in The Clash and I used to, I worked for them a bit as well when I was, when wow. I was younger as a punk. And then, um, and then it was it was through doing supports with the acrylics mm. that the cannibals got together because we supported the beat. When the beat came to play in Hull, our keyboard player gave them our demo tape, and then they listened to that and they invited us on tour with them. So that's how I met oh. Dave and Andy, and that's yeah. how the cannibals, the cannibals came together.
I, what I what I used to do is I used to go up to Birmingham to to write. So I'd go up for about two days, and we'd all get together and we'd just spend time you know, working on the songs. And I'd come back and I'd work on them. And we did that for about a year, and then we had about an album's worth of stuff. And then uh, we started shopping around to get a deal because you know. Did you have the name by now? No, the name came. From a movie, much, isn't it? much later. Yeah, it's from a movie called All the Fine Young Cannibals. When the tube film of, of us doing Johnny came out, we, we had actually signed to London, but it kind of, because they knew that that was coming out and they were afraid that other people, other companies might see us, yeah. it kind of like gave them the impetus. Gave the impetus to sort it out and, you know, Was that your first, signage. was that sort of the first TV for you, as it were? Um, yeah. yeah. So now the, the organisation of the Fine Young Cannibals has got really big. You've won your two Brit Awards, you know, you're, you're a global success. How, how did it start to sort of pitter out? What, what, what was the stop point on it? I think, what had ha I think nobody around us had had experienced that kind of success. The record company hadn't had such a successful group and the managers hadn't and we as the group had never you know, had that kind of success. And I think that we just lost the plot a bit, really. We kind of... So, you know, we, we sold a lot of records, and the thing was then to sell more the next time. Mm. And if we didn't sell more the next time, if we sold half the it next time, it was a failure. When half would have been a lot of records anyway. Yeah. You know, selling half the amount would still mean a lot of records. And I think that that kind of mentality, everybody got affected by that. Mm. And I think that that kind of sort of wrung the neck a bit, really.
I'm proud of what we did as the cannibals, and I, and I don't sort of have any feeling that I want to like forget that past or you know I'm, I'm I want to I'm you know a lot of the people I'm working with now played in the cannibals, so I want to carry that thread mm. through. I mean even Andy, Andy Cox who play guitar in the cannibals, mm. did a couple of dates with us over the summer. So I'm not sort of like trying to avoid that. I'm not trying to say, look, this is me, you know, yeah. that wasn't me, but this is me now, <laughs> yeah, you know. Right. That was, it's, I'm, I'm happy to, you know, carry that, carry that along because I am, you know, I am proud of what we did. And, um, and also, you know, in the shows, you know, people want to hear those songs yeah. as well. And, and I'm playing the ones that I like, you know, personally I like anyway, so... It's it's not it's not an issue. What brought it to happen? I can't walk out because I love you too much, baby. Why can't you see what you're doing to me when you don't believe a word I say? I've been doing some live stuff um, over the summer and I've been doing Suspicious Minds in the set and I mean, it's a great song anyway, I mean it's a great song and um, I don't know, I, I like that period of Elvis as well, you know, there's, there was quite a lot of songs he did around that time that were really, really, you know, great and um, and it was, you know, it's a good song, basically it's a good song. Shut up, no friend I know. Stop and say hello. Would I still see suspicion in your eyes? There you go again. Asking where I've been. Can't you see the tears are real? I cry. Suspicious smile. 
trouble Are out of step If my balance Has been upset Are there's a feeling I can't accept a song and you don't really know what you said and then three months later or something you know it it, you can see the meaning in it because it because it, you know just often it just comes out and mm. not always but you know a lot of the time it just it just comes out and you, and you don't know what it is you're really writing about at the time or I don't mm. and then it, it kind of has a meaning you know a few months later I can I can kind of like see it mm. and and it kind of means more as well because you know it's a bit like if you look at a, a picture or something and you can't you can't see anything in it. You know, it might be an abstract painting like Phil does upstairs. But then after a, you know a while you look at it and then you see something in it and it and it means something. It means something that it didn't mean before. Mm. You know before it was just like a nice tune and some words that fitted and then, you know a good groove or whatever. And then then you think oh well yeah you know that actually has you know, resonance mm. to me, you know, it means something. I've lost days They won't come back My memory Is fading fast I should say Also, I think that the act of singing them kind of makes you know makes it bearable in a way. It's cathartic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It kind of you know you, because you're you're singing about it, it, it no longer becomes as as frightening mm. or um, as crippling as mm. you know if it's if it's a crippling emotion. It doesn't. It becomes less so because you're because you're getting it out. Mm. Yeah. I'm not the man. Do you have any sort of hassle from parents on that sort of level? Do you, you know, go ahead and get a proper job? What you're doing, hanging about with nights, like, not in those urchins that are, you know, trying to be in rock and roll. Nobody ever makes it. Did you get any of that? No, I mean, proper jobs have never been a thing in my family anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> there was no no hassle. <laughs> like that. And so no, no. I, in fact, I got a lot of encouragement. Really, mm. I mean, from just like you know, from friends and neighbours. I knew that I didn't want to do like a regular job. I knew that I knew that I didn't want to have to, you know, have to be somewhere every day. On you know, I didn't want to. I didn't want like an extension of school mm. into my adult life, mm. which sort of what, what happens. Yeah, what I felt it'd be like. And also, you know, I think it was probably a bit more comfortable on the dole in those days than it mm. possibly is now. So, you know, you could kind of luxuriate. In a way, you know, you could you could sort of spend time just sort of sitting around trying to work out what it is what it is you wanted to do. John, there's a future there for you, and you've got so much to prove. There ain't nothing you can do, John. Don't let no one put you down You won't always 
Because people say, well, have you changed? And I'm, I'm not sure if, you know, if, if I've changed because of that success or just because I've got older mm. anyway and I've done different things. I mean, it certainly does take you out of your regular environment. Mm. But then, you know, you could join the Foreign Legion and that would take you out of your regular environment and that would... That would Possibly change. Yeah, I know, but then you just disappear. You wouldn't have people going, oh, you know. What yeah, was that? I mean, the, 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 there is that. But then again, you know, growing up in Hull, you know, I used to have blonde hair, so you know, people would see, you know, you dressed in your punk gear. So you know, every day people would be looking at you anyway. anyway. And so, so that side of it. But you even get weird reactions it, from family as well. I mean, that's. That's something that everybody seems to feel that gets a little bit of fame. Because even your family starts to go, oh, you become someone famous rather than a member of their family. Yeah, almost. And, yeah. And, yeah. And, that, and I think that, you know, you're aware of that and you kind of become, you know, I think I became sort of embarrassed about that because you are sort of, 
seeing, uh, being seen as, as something, like you say, as something different. My train gets to the station, sun is going down. Got no destination as I make my way across town. Smell of something cooking, it's floating down the street. They're turning on the TV and they're sitting down to eat. It's the same old houses, it's the same old streets. They don't look like nothing but the mean like to me. And sometimes I wonder, will this journey end? I don't know where I'm going, I'm just looking for a friend. And I think that that's why, in a lot of cases, people who are, you know, like celebrities, tend to like lock around with each other, is not because they particularly want to. Even it's just that you, you lost know, all their other mates. <laughs> yeah, in, kind in, of. In, in a funny, yeah. in a funny sort of way. I mean, I, you know, I, I mean, I've, I know people though. That, I mean, I've I've got friends that I grew up with, and I can't remember not knowing them. That you know, I grew up in the same street with. I mean, and I've you know I've got friends from thirty years ago, longer, twenty years ago. So it, it's, it's it's not like, oh poor me, you know, nobody wants to know me now. I've been on TV, mm. but there is, when it first sort of kicked off, that I was embarrassed by it because mm. it's like, you know, why should I have that luck? And you know, yeah, there, there was there a bit, was, of, a bit even even though at the well. same time. That's what I really wanted, and I wasn't going to do anything else. It's the same old houses, it's the same old streets. They don't look like nothing but the mean like to me. And sometimes I wonder, will this journey end? I don't know where I'm going, I'm just looking for a friend. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just looking for a friend. I don't know what I'm thinking. I'm just looking for a friend.
There is an, a, there's a drive, and it does seem that 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 maybe eighty percent, maybe of, of people that succeed, whether it be on screen or or uh, like you know on stage with music or comedy, it seems that they've got this drive that's that's generally sort of like I've got to change my situation. Yeah, I, but you can never be sure, though, like you say, and I don't because you know some people come from very comfortable backgrounds and do really good work as well, so you can never. It's it, in in a way, uh, it, it's 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 something that I wouldn't even want to, because um, you know you you can sort of sit back and say, well, you know, it's because I'm because I've had an hard life. That's yeah. why I'm the way I am. Yeah. And it's that people like the same. I think yeah, people, people yeah, in it, yeah. Oh, you know, the, the cliche is, oh, if I wasn't doing this, I'd be in prison. And, yeah. But, you know, well, maybe maybe you would, maybe you wouldn't. Yeah. You know? And so I. I, 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 I it doesn't matter. I think what matters is you know the stuff that you're doing. Mm. That's what really matters. There ain't nothing it can't do for you. Comes for free, like the best things do. Stays by your side when everything else has gone. Giving you the strength you need to carry on. There ain't nothing you can't ask it for. Keeps on giving more and more But you better show it the greatest respect It will tear you down and leave you for dead You keep talking like you do Saying nothing, I can't get close to you Then you tell me everything will turn out just fine When I'm with you, I feel like we're doing time I'm standing here, I got no alibi I just want to keep you by my side You don't ever let me into your world Your actions telling me you're more than your words oh, Love's not enough Love's not enough When it's a word We're just repeating Thank you. 
solo career you know it's now not long no longer to find young cannibals it was roll and gift what what made you decide to to continue because it's a tough choice isn't it yeah you know, it is it, it is. certainly is now i mean you've talked about we talked much earlier about you know a, a band when when you formed as the cannibals you needed you needed management so that you could go off you could send somebody else as, a, as an acceptable face of everything to the, to the labels. Now you're managing yourself as well. So what's, what's made you to, to go like, you know, it's almost like getting back to the earliest days of just getting up off, off you know, off your backside and, go, and going out there. What, what's driving you? Well, I think I, what, how I feel now is how I felt years ago when I first started, whereas I've got really nothing to lose and everything to gain. Mm by doing it. I, you know, um, I've sort of been not doing it for, for quite a long time. I wasn't sure, you see, that's why I did some dates over the summer, just to really see if, if I enjoyed it or not. And I did the dates and I really did enjoy it. Uh, you know, it was great. Tell me you want me back for the can say to you is certainly certainly from the north of England Roland you have been a gift <laughs> it's just a car.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.